Mr. Thompson here. We're looking at U.S. History Standard 5. Investigate the specific events and key ideas that brought about the adoption and implementation of the U.S. Constitution. More specifically, we're looking at Part E of that standard. Explain how the objections to the ratification of the Constitution were addressed in the Bill of Rights. One of the main reasons that American colonists revolted against the British government was the belief that Parliament had reduced, had diminished, had just forgotten about uh, their civil rights that were guaranteed to them under the English Bill of Rights. When the Constitution was drafted, Anti-Federalists believed that a strong central government could also limit uh, civil liberties. So the Anti-Federalists said, we are not going to ratify, uh, so agree to a new constitution without the including or adding a bill that protected uh, civil rights, uh, civil liberties from a strong central government. The Federalists said that they would support the addition of a Bill of Rights as one of the first orders of business in the new government if the Anti-Federalists would support and ratify the Constitution in its current form. This deal resolved the deadlock and the Constitution was ratified after the required nine votes once New Hampshire voted and the Constitution was put into effect. The remaining states soon followed. New Hampshire was the critical ninth vote because they needed nine of the 13 to ratify the Constitution. As promised, during the ratification process, James Madison uh, wrote up the Bill of Rights and sent the proposal to uh, both houses of Congress, and it was approved by both houses, and then the states ratified the proposal, and the negotiations between the Federalists and Anti-Federalists during the ratification process succeeded in getting the Constitution ratified and a Bill of Rights added. So everyone wins. Everyone was happy. Looking specifically at the Bill of Rights, it's important to note that the first nine deal with individual protections. Some of these rights include the freedom of expression, assembly, protections against self-incrimination, and the right to a trial by a civilian jury, as opposed to those hated admiralty courts. Furthermore, to protect these individual rights, Madison limited the power of the federal government in the Tenth Amendment by reserving any power that's not listed, so any right that's not listed specifically, he gave that power to the states instead of the federal government. The rights guaranteed in the Bill of Rights that James Madison wrote uh, remedied any objections that anti-federalists had to the original Constitution because it stopped any fear they had of a potential abuse of power by the federal government because of the protections in the Bill of Rights for individuals.